Konnichiwa and welcome back to Japan. We're now in Hiroshima, uh, well renowned for being the first ever target of a nuclear military attack. We're gonna take you on a journey through history today and then show how much this city has recovered since then too. Yeah, it feels very modern. It does, it's very modern as so obviously it yeah. has to all be well, rebuilt. I'm not surprised. Let's do it. So we're currently in the Peace Park, um, which is where the memorial to the 160 estimated thousand people who died from the attack is there's obviously a lot of japanese people a lot of tourists here paying their respects and only 10 percent of those are estimated 160,000 people were military so 90 percent civilians this is the flame of peace That's the Children's Peace Memorial. And I guess that's why there's so many children there. We have read six elementary school students. We are from Shimane. Can you our school students? We study about peace. Can you write a peace message? Yes. Of course. We will. We write Woo. it here? Yes. Okay. okay. Um. You think you should make children what? In charge. <laughs> Profound, that is. <laughs> you write a nice peace message in there. Yeah. Tell them to keep smiling at the end. So this is the A Dome or Genbaku Dome, which when the bomb was dropped on the 6th of August, 8.15am, 1945, that fateful day that destroyed 70% of all buildings in Hiroshima, this one survived. And has been left as a memorial in its state that it was in, I guess, nearly 80 years ago now. Yes, yeah, it's just chilling, it's, I don't know, it's hard to put into words. So it actually went off quite high, so it went off 600 metres above this. 600 metres above and like 150 yeah. metres to the meters left? To south east, which is that. And everything around it was completely destroyed, but this remained. They intend to keep it this way forever, and it's had two rebuilding not rebuilding like reinforcing projects since and the donations from across the world have more than covered it and now they have a huge fund that will keep it like this forever oranges and water i don't know why like glasses of water and oranges strange i think the dome is I don't know, the most powerful thing here for sure. So obviously the memorials are all really nice, but they're all new and like, just to see the dome as it would have been back then, it's just, I don't know, it's just crazy. I'm just saying the dome is very powerful. I know, it has it's got like a bit just... slanted, can you see? Yeah, well you think so, I guess. Well, yeah, no, I know. <laughs> I just heard another tour group say, obviously we're not on a tour, we never are. Um, they're going to the point where the actual bomb, he described it as the, Hypo center, some the epicenter, basically where epicenter. the bomb went off. Um, so we're gonna follow them there. Oh, they bumped down into a car. Yeah, I think it's in a really random place. Let's go check it out. Yeah, the hypo center. 600 meters above this spot. The first that. atomic bomb used in history. The city was exposed to temperatures of approximately 4,000 degrees. Crazy. Look, the touring game survived. I know, I can't believe that. Nice. This bridge we're on now is the actual target of the bomb, what they were aiming for. 
And obviously where we just came from was about, yeah, 700, 800 yards away. So the Enola Gay, I believe the plane was called that dropped it was pretty much bang on the money or as close as you could get. It's a T-shaped bridge. So I wonder if that's why, because it's clear to see from the sky. Yeah, probably. So this clock tower is the peace clock tower which at quarter past eight every morning the mortal moment of the blasting back in 1945 it will chime its prayer for perpetual peace and appeal to the peoples of the world that the wish be answered promptly may the chime pervade the remotest corners of the earth wow so yeah 8 15 every morning i wonder how loud it is if we could hear it from our accommodation i know i was gonna say you wouldn't want to live right next to that would you but yeah, it's a nice uh, sentiment. Is. What? Hole in the tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'd like that? Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> nice hole in the tree. Very nice hole in the tree. All right, we're at the, the Peace Bell, which is next to the clock tower. There's England, Great Britain. Oh, yes. It's got a world map around it, so it just vibrates to all of the world to stop war. Oh, oh, that's, a big, that's a big battering ram you got there. You try to do it gently. I used to hate school photos as a kid. Do you like school photos? <laughs> <There's> so many. <laughs> that was actually how you looked in all of them as well. There's just so many kids. Yeah, I don't know if it's like school. I thought that in Japan they always do a school trip on a Monday and it's like Thursday Why today. It's just what I've heard. You shouldn't go to places on a Monday because there's loads of school trips there. But maybe it's just maybe it's just always like this here. I, mean, I guess it is a very important place, isn't it? I think this is the main museum here. Yes, yeah, so we're going to go into a museum now. The Peace Memorial Museum, I believe it's called. Right, we're in the museum. Tilly's got the audio tour. She's where she's a better at listening uh, than reading, learning, uh, listening. I can't even speak, so I probably need it okay, as well. Do you want the audio tour? Um, and also means she leaves me alone while oh, we're in there. Doesn't just harass me with questions. Um, also, there's only 200 yen each to get in, which is really good value. That's the bridges. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, we've made it out of the museum, which was understandably very depressing. Um, it was really graphic. Really graphic. It was basically like life before the bomb. The second exhibition was like the effects of the bomb, and the effects of the bomb was just like photos of like mutilated bodies and like accounts, just just like constant. Like it was. So yeah, it was pretty graphic. Um, yeah, what was the third exhibition? Uh, oh, about the history of the making the bomb. History of the making the bomb and like the history of World War II in America and how the bomb came to be. And then after that it was like nuclear political climate now and how yeah. like we need to never make sure a bomb never goes off again. It was, um, yeah, pretty understandably depressing. Um, I don't have anything else to say, to be honest. Me either. It's important though, it's important to see it and I see there were so many like Japanese schools in there, it was very crowded at times. I was kinda of like, should kids be looking at this? I mean they're so young so it's just like pictures of dead bodies and really, really graphic stuff. Um, yeah, you wouldn't get that in England, but I guess it's important to understand the history to make sure it never happens again. Also, I've got to say my hair's all gone. That was not intentional entirely. I was a bit of a translation error at the barber. And he basically just shaved my head again. So now I'm back to the Middle Eastern Eddie. 
I thought we probably should address that a lot earlier in this video since I've got a serious tan line here as well. I do, yeah, we do. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, it wasn't intentional, but. It is what it is. It is what it is, I'm not exactly. I'm my haircut here, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> no, it's, it's risky business getting your haircut in Japan. Google Translate failed me, basically. What a lot of people don't know about Hiroshima is on September 17th, 1945, so less than two months after the bomb was dropped, it was also hit by a massive typhoon which destroyed half of the bridges in the city, killed a further 3,000 people and destroyed any infrastructure that was left. Um, which was, yeah, the final nail in the coffin. Look at that Wow. Little puppy. Is that a dog? Yeah. And now we're at a pet shop. <laughs> and yeah, what I was saying before we got into that pet shop was after the war, it was rebuilt into what it is today, a busy city, a huge city, actually the biggest city in the western province of Chugoku in Honshu. So yeah, it just shows no matter how hard you get knocked down, you can always get back up again. Hope. A symbol of hope. A symbol of hope. All right, so that concludes our day in Hiroshima at the Peace Memorial Park and the museum. Yeah, it was an amazing day, kind of day you feel like privileged to come and do something like this and see it for yourself, especially my personal highlight. I mean, you can't really call it a highlight when it's been a day like today, but it was... But a monumental moment. The, the, the dome, I think, was just like so powerful. Yeah. Um, and all the kids, all the school kids on like the school trips there, it was like so nice to see like the youth and like it's all now become obviously a symbol of hope and like peace for the future. Um, yeah, really wholesome and just super interesting day in general. Yeah, I think that in hindsight, I probably, if you're coming here, I'd maybe recommend doing the museum first and then going to the Peace Garden because I feel like you kind of want to end with hope and peace and that's what the museum kind of guides you through yeah like the worst part and then it kind of ends with the hope symbolism yeah I agree I think maybe you know maybe I mean? we did it in the wrong order like we did the museum is a lot more yeah. depressing than the kind of positive looking to the future memorial park yeah um yeah, yeah. but yeah it's just a super interesting day in general um thanks for watching as always and we'll see you next week for another part of Japan. Bye!